Please welcome Heo Krömer, Charité Universitätsmedizin Berlin. Good afternoon, I'm Heo Krömer, I'm the CEO of Charité, a large academic medical center here in Berlin. And we are desperate in need for reliable uh, diagnostics, in particular based on AI, and therefore it's my great pleasure to nominate AI Gnostics for the Falling Walls uh, Venture Competition uh, today. AI Gnostic uh, originates from the Berlin Institute of Health. It's integrated into Charité and promotes medical translation. And part of that is a digital health accelerator and AI Gnostic started as a development project and spin-off in 2020. There are two co-founders, Frederik Klauschen and Klaus Robert Müller. They have a fantastic team and uh, they built a company of over 80 people have acquired roughly 20 million euro in venture capital. We are nominating AI Gnostics for their outstanding work in bringing AI-powered precision diagnostic to pathology. For the foreseeable future, pathology will be one of the major pillars of diagnostics, and in view of the aging society, there will be a very high request uh, for pathological procedures, and uh, there's an urgent need to base them on AI, thereby advancing translational research, trans supporting clinical trials, and enabling our day-to-day -day routine work. And uh, in my view, AI Gnostics serves us both. It's an example for outstanding potential of digital technologies in medicine, and an example for highly dynamic startup environments, for example, at Charité. And I'm pleased to hand over to the CEO of AI Gnostics, Victor Matthias. Breaking the wall to precision diagnostics in healthcare. Victor Matthias, AI Gnostics. Thank you very much. Pathology is a key bottleneck in precision medicine today. Let me explain to you why. Pathology comes in when a tissue sample is extracted, for instance via a biopsy or sometimes straight away a surgery. That is, for instance, frequently the case in cancer which drives about two-thirds of the caseload in the pathology lab. Pathologists then look at ultra-thin slices of tissue on these glass slides with a microscope. One patient can have up to 40 of those glass slides, and the images under the microscope are absolutely huge. So pathologists need to zoom into small areas of that image to start finding and characterizing, for instance, cancer and assessing biomarkers. Then, they need to combine that information in their head with other written reports, such as sequencing data, clinical data, and so on and so forth. They use all of this information to render a diagnosis, which is then the foundation for patient treatment decisions. As I hope you feel from this process, this is really prone to errors, highly qualitative, and definitely not what will support the next generation of precision medicine. At Diagnostics, we're determined to revolutionize this process. We start with morphology, where we train AI-powered models to segment tissue samples into different areas. For instance, in here in red, you see the cancer and other areas of interest. And then we zoom onto the cellular level, and uh, we start identifying and classifying million, many millions of cells across thousands of tissue samples. In a second step, we then take this immense amount of data and train downstream AI models to start understanding how does the tissue of somebody look like who responds to a therapy versus somebody who doesn't. And that's, for instance, hugely interesting in immunotherapy and many other areas. What is more, morphology is only part of the puzzle, so we combine that information with other data modalities, such as genomics, clinical data, proteomics, and so on and so forth, which is really hard to do and quite special. What I want you to take away from this is our mission. We are building the number one global partner for the analysis of biomedical data in pharma research and in diagnostic development. Before I go into the applications in more detail, I'd like, I'd like to introduce the startup briefly. So I think we uniquely combine science, tech, and data at scale. We have started in 2018 as a spin-out from the Charité BIH, as mentioned leveraging technology that was developed at the Technical University of Berlin and the Fraunhofer HHI since 2011. I think we've come a long way. We raised around about 20 million in funding from blue chip investors, such as Böhringer Ingelheim and Wellington Partners. And we've built a team of close to 100 FTE now, 
uh, in a very multidisciplinary setup, we have pathologists, biologists, data scientists, regulatory experts, and so on and so forth. And we're supported by a team of around about 20 freelance pathologists who help us develop the AI models. This is translating into first successes, and we're now working with five of the top 20 global pharma companies already. So why do they work with us? We create a unique competitive advantage for them across four key areas of their value chain. Firstly, we help discover novel targets in multimodal data, which is really the next frontier in data science at the moment. Then we also work a lot in research and development focused around biomarker discovery and validation. And once we have those biomarkers, we can train AI models and develop medical products to go into prospective clinical trials to score those biomarkers and eventually go into clinics and labs as companion diagnostics, for which we have a partnership strategy with third-party clinical platforms. Of course, they're competitors, but there's actually very few people in the space who can do this well, and it's also a nascent space. We're one of the top three global companies in this space. There's a lot of people going after clinical applications and platforms, which we consider supplementary rather than competitive. And uh, what I also want you to take away is our, fee our four key competitive advantages, one being unrivaled data access, two being leading patented technologies for training AI models and interpreting AI models with explainable AI. Thirdly, our capabilities in really analyzing multimodal data, because one modality will never give you the full answer. And lastly, we've done our homework in terms of regulatory. We ISO 27001 27001 certified and 13485. Lastly, we believe we have the team that it takes to build a global company of scale. We have deep functional expertise and experienced co-founders rooted in science and academia. So why am I here today? Obviously, I want your vote, <laughs> so please make sure you vote. And obviously, we're always looking for partners and new investors as we're launching our Series B in January. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, let's go straight to the questions. Stefan. No, 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 the microphone. <laughs> okay, OK, fascinating presentation. Thank you very much. Um, how do you, could you elaborate a little bit more about your competitive edge over Pass AI and Oaken when it comes to multimodal capabilities, especially? Sure. So Oaken only does federated learning, which doesn't lend itself well to the analysis of image data. So they're obviously really good at looking at sequencing data and other data modalities, but they cannot, for instance, train cell level models. No, this is not my presentation. No. <laughs> Sorry. <It's laughs> we can finished. take it offline. No, you cannot uh, do it. Weakness again. of Okin, only federated learning on big data sets cannot really go on to cellular level. And then Pathway doesn't really have data access and is really far down the diagnostics line. So they're not really doing a lot of discovery in multimodal data, but happy to chat about that offline. Okay. Next question. Yes, please, Himai. Hi, apologies if I missed it, but are you doing anything with label free imaging or is it all based on? labels the, the imaging data. You mean annotating the images or what? Yeah, yeah. extracting diagnostic markers from images without labeling. Yeah, we do that too, but so to say the approach is two-stepped. First, we generate readouts from those images, like we extract each individual cell, and then we train a downstream model to find those markers, if that makes sense. Okay, we have Chaz next, please. Thank you for the microphone. Thank you for running around all the time. Thank you. Have you got examples where you've identified new targets or new biomarkers? We have hypotheses for that in lung cancer. Unfortunately, in-house research has only really become viable since a few months in our Series A. But we have examples where we work with pharma companies in validating their biomarkers, and we are in the process of taking some of those into trials. Great. OK, Gitter first, please. Thank you. Just a quick one, because you were saying you already have customers and a large team, so I would expect that you have already quite substantial traction, so maybe you can share your revenue levels with us and also the uh, potential, so how quickly can you grow, scale, and maybe link to that on the business model? Sure. I can share the revenue numbers here, but we can chat during Series B. We work with five of the top 20 global pharma companies, so I think we can show traction. And how you, think about, how you can think about scale is that it typically starts with an initial research program where you develop an AI model, let's say for a specific biomarker. That's a big effort. And then you hope that these will go into clinical trials where you can start reusing them across clinical trials. And then once it lands in the clinic, it runs for 25 years. Okay, then the business model, how do you earn money? In the microphone. No, it doesn't exactly. anymore. They turn me off. Ah, <laughs> they turn you off. Okay, good. So contract research in the beginning, and then once it goes into clinical trials and CDX, it becomes more customized and more interesting. 
Yes, the question was about the business model in case you didn't hear it. Okay, good. Sorry, it will be first Elizabeth. Yeah, quick one. Um, I would like to know whether and how you can transfer um, the models you have at the moment to new indications or, or other analysis parameters. Excellent question, one of the key challenges, because currently we need to develop a new model in each indication, basically. And um, we're in the process of building a foundation model to do that, which will hopefully very strongly reduce the need to optimize in each individual indication, which is simply a key challenge to do. OK, we have 37 seconds. Yeah. Um, thanks a lot for a really, really inspiring uh, talk. So I'm wondering, like, uh, I'm a big fan of explainable, uh, explainable uh, AI. Can you explain your AI a bit more? Because, so for example, there's uh, CNNs everywhere. There's multimodal models, uh, multimodal models everywhere. So uh, absolutely, thank 15 you. seconds. We use the same CNN models as most, but we have something called layerized relevance propagation, which is our flavor of explainable AI. It's very difficult to get that right. So you could change every single pixel in an image, see how the model changes, not feasible. So the trick is, how do you arrive at that answer? And we, that, that's part of the secret sauce. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you very much. Love Thank the private secret sauce. <laughs>